Now, I've made lots and lots of sourdough before. I've never, I don't think, made a really, really successful loaf. I'm told this is a foolproof recipe, so let's see. Right, so we're gonna make a loaf of sourdough. In here, I've got my sourdough starter. This is the first day of me having it, but it is a mature one. I'm gonna do another video on how to make your own sourdough starter, because it's actually incredibly easy and I've done it before. Uh, but this one was gifted to me from a friend. And what we've got in there is a 106 grams of starter. It doesn't really matter what you start with. Um, but if you've got a bigger starter, then obviously you're gonna discard quite a lot of it before you start, because what we're gonna do now, and you'll see how this process grows throughout the stages. It's currently 6 p.m. and at about seven o'clock, we're going to mix this with a load of flour and water, but I'm gonna do that really quickly. So I'm gonna just do a bit of filming now. So we've got 106 grams there of sourdough starter. Next thing we're gonna do is gonna weigh out exactly the same amount. Whatever amount you have, it's the same amount of flour and the same amount of sugar. And you wanna use a strong bread flour. There's lots of different types available. Um, I picked some up from a wholesalers. So obviously I'm getting it in a much bigger quantity than you'd get in the supermarket. This whole massive sack of flour, and this is 16 kilograms, and I think this was about 12 quid, 12 pounds in price from a local wholesaler. So realistically, this is going to make, if we're careful about how we do our feeding and we don't waste too much, then this is gonna make, let me do some quick maths here, uh, 80, 80 loaves of bread. So 80 loaves of bread for 12 pounds. Um, but if we're careful about how we use the waste, the byproduct, we're also going to get a huge amount. And on top of those 80 loaves of bread, we're also gonna get lots and lots of pizza dough. We're gonna get lots and lots of crackers and lots and lots of byproducts that we can make from the byproducts of sourdough. So it's a really exciting project for someone like me. I've made sourdough before, but not for a very, very long time. And I have to say, not particularly successfully. But I did cut some corners and I didn't have anyone that I knew that was doing a successful sourdough. I was doing it all from information that I gleaned online. And like I say, I didn't strictly follow recipes, but I've got some really good advice from people that I know and trust this time. So I'm fully expecting this actually to be much, much better than my previous version. So a friend of mine's making sourdough regularly and he gave me one to bring home and previously none of my family have enjoyed anything I've baked in terms of sourdough, but everyone liked this. So uh, I've really got my fingers crossed. So like I say, we're aiming for 106 grams. I don't think you need to be super precise, but I want to be fairly precise, because like I say, I've had failures in the past. So 108 grams, we'll, we'll be happy with that. So 108 grams, and then we want to add 108 grams of water, which is gonna bring us up to 216, obviously. So we'll do that next. So there we go, there's our flour and water. That's what we're going to be feeding our sourdough with in about an hour. If I do it too early, what the idea is, the next step, we want to catch it when it's risen or on the rise still. We don't want it to have time to have risen and then start going down again if possible. So we're gonna leave that just like that with a tea towel over the top and we're gonna come back to that, like I say, in about an hour. And then overnight tonight, this sourdough starter will feed and uh, we'll come back to it tomorrow tomorrow morning and it'll be ready for the next stage. Half past eight, so it's a bit later than I would have liked, but I had a podcast I needed to record. So we're now going to add the flour and water to our starter. And we're gonna give it a good mix. Look at that. And this is to feed it, like I say. We're going to give it a good mix and then put it back in our pot and we're gonna leave it with the top off and a clean tea towel over the top just to stop any bugs or whatever getting in. And then in the morning, it will be ready for the next step. So I'm just gonna give it a good stir now and stir the new flour in with the starter and the water. I'm gonna need two hands, so I'm gonna have to put the camera down. Pop a tea towel over the top. 
and then that's going to sit there until the morning and uh, tomorrow we're going to make our first loaf in a very long time of sourdough okay so it's been a little over 12 hours and as you can see this is bubbled up nicely you see all that life in there that's exactly what we're looking for and now we're going to make our bread dough it's a really really simple recipe that i'm following it's a recipe from a friend now i've made lots and lots of sourdough before and i've never i don't think made a really really successful loaf i'm told this is a foolproof recipe so let's see usually what's happened to me in the past is it's just been really heavy really like a brick you know really really solid and you know not inedible but not delicious and i brought home a loaf from my friend who bakes it all the time now and everybody in my family liked it which i really wasn't expecting so hopefully using this allegedly foolproof recipe we're going to be making sourdough all the time so let's see how it goes so I'm going to give you the recipe and show you how to do it. And like I said, I was told it was foolproof. We're about to test that. So we're going to start by just synchronizing our scales so that they're allowed for the weight of the bowl. Then we're going to add 400 grams of flour and 230 milliliters or grams of water. The next thing we're going to add is 160 grams of our starter. So we're after a total of 790. Look at that. And that's obviously going to leave us some starter for next time. There we go, 791. So we're within a gram or two of everything. And the next thing, which is really important and can't be left out, is some salt. It's really, really important to the recipe, I'm told. It's a natural flavouring, flavour enhancer. So we're going to Grab a pinch of salt and put that in next. And then we're just going to mix. And this is our bread dough. As soon as this is all mixed together, the next thing we'll be doing is kneading it. Okay, so now we're just going to knead it. And one of the mistakes I've made in the past, and I've been told it's really important, is that so many people at this stage, because it's so sticky and gloopy, they go to add a load of flour either to their hands or to the worktop to try and take away that stickiness. But that is certainly a mistake I've made in the past. And from what I've been reading, it's a fairly common mistake for others. So you'll notice I haven't added any flour to either the worktop or myself. And, you know, I'm paying the price, <laughs> but I think that's going to uh, pay me dividends in the long run because the dough will soak up any flour you give it at this point and that's going to just increase the, the heaviness of the bread. It's certainly, like I say, a mistake that I've made before. So we're going to knead this now for, I'm not sure how long because I'm going to let the dough will tell me. I'll show you how you tell when it's ready in a second when I get there. But for now, I'm just going to keep kneading it until the consistency changes quite a lot. And I'd probably be a bit quicker if I had full movement in my right wrist, which I don't at the moment. I'd be able to use both hands a little bit better. But I'm just gonna knead this now for, like I say, about 10 minutes and then we'll see where we're at. The time that I'm kneading isn't relevant to me. That's not what I'm gonna take my cues from. I'm gonna take my cues from the state of the dough. So already you'll notice after just a minute or two, there's a lot less dough sticking to me, a lot less dough sticking to the counter. It's already changing. And it's just gonna change more over the next few minutes. Okay, so I've been going for 10 minutes now. Let's just have a look. And if you pull it apart, And just tease it apart and let it stretch. See how it doesn't break, but you can start to see through it a little bit. That's exactly what you're looking for. It's still, it's going to break a little bit earlier than I would like. So we'll go for another minute or two, but we're almost there now. What you want is that light passing through it like a window pane, but without it breaking. So we're 
We're very, very close. So you see how it's stretching now without breaking and I can see the light passing through. I'm not sure if you can because the way the camera is, but that's what we're aiming for. So we're now done. The next step is we're just gonna leave this now to prove. So all we're gonna do is just bring it into a ball and then just allow it to prove. Now, the difference between sourdough and regular bread at this point is just gonna take a lot longer. So regular bread might take about an hour. This is gonna take about three hours. So we're just gonna cover it up with a clean tea towel and leave it for three hours. So this has now been proving for nearly four hours. The, the recipe I've got says three hours, that's what I was told. And I think in most households, three hours is gonna be about right. We're a bit mean with our heating here, so it's a bit cooler in our house than it probably is in yours. And it's January at the moment, so even more so. But you can see the difference how much that has risen since we popped it in there. And what we're gonna do now is basically just knock it back, just knock all the air out of it again. And when we're done with this stage, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna place it on this clean tea towel, which I'm just gonna really lightly dust with some flour to stop it sticking. We're always minimizing the flour insofar as what we're actually mixing into our dough. And you'll probably notice I haven't used any flour at all yet on either the surface or my fingers while I've been actually working the dough. This is the first additional flour I've used and it's not gonna be worked into the dough, it's just gonna stop it sticking to the uh, tea towel. So you can be a bit generous there if you like. And uh, yeah, here we go. So we're just gonna basically knock a lot of the air out of it, bring it back into a ball like we had just before the first prove, because you can overprove it. So, but I think we've got this at just the right time and we're not trying to work it too much. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try and form it into a nice tight ball. So we're gonna do that by peeling it back over itself. So that we're kind of, what you need to imagine, imagine this is upside down and the top portion is what's currently on the counter and we're trying to stretch that top out. So we're kind of pulling the top away from itself to stretch it and pull it up into a ball. And then the next thing we're gonna do, having moved it the right way up, is just pull it towards ourselves and you see how that stretches the surface. So if you watch the surface and you'll see it being pulled by the worktop. And look at that, that's exactly what we're trying to do. And we're just gonna come around a few more times to tighten up this surface on the top. That's the goal. If I do it away from the camera, you might be able to see I'm sort of holding the bottom in place and pulling it towards me so it's rolling along the surface, but it's not able to roll completely. I'm holding the bottom at the back down still so that it kind of stretches all the dough on the surface. Can you see that? And that's exactly what we're looking for. And again, I'm not using any flour on my hands, all the work top, and you can see it's getting less and less sticky all the time, every stage of the process. And this, I think, is pretty much ready to go back in our bowl. And this time we're gonna turn it upside down when we put it in. And that's gonna be the top of our roll, the top of our loaf. I'm just going to place it in there. We're gonna leave this to prove again for the same amount of time. So it's gonna be another three hours. And then after that, it will be going in the oven. So this will be ready for tea time. So a couple of other things to say about the process and ways that you can make it more time friendly. But to have made this loaf, I'm probably gonna have dedicated about an hour of my time to it. Now this is the first one I've made in a very long time. First one I've made using this method. If the results go as well as I'm expecting, if they're anything like as good as the loaf that I tasted from my friend who gave me both the starter and the recipe, 
which my family all enjoyed, then we're gonna be making a great deal of sourdough. So I'll get much quicker at it. But there's a few other things that you can do as well. So what I could have done, for example, is made two. I could have made double the amount and have two loaves. And at this point, at the point they are now, I could take one of them and put them in the fridge and leave that proving overnight. And that would be ready to cook tomorrow morning. So I could have a fresh loaf tonight that we could all eat with our dinner. I could have maybe soup for dinner, something that's gonna use up a lot of the bread, and then have a fresh loaf cooked for tomorrow, which might last a bit longer, all from the same amount of work. The other thing to say is they freeze incredibly well, sourdough. Sourdough will freeze and defrost really, really well. So I could make five, six, seven loaves all at once with almost exactly the same amount of work involved as making one, but just by increasing the volumes, a little bit longer kneading, I suppose, and I could bake enough bread to last a week and a half, two weeks or whatever. So those are all things that I will do if this goes as well as I'm expecting and we start getting into a system of eating it more regularly. The other thing I wanted to quickly say is we're also gonna be doing with our sourdough starter, we're gonna be using some of the byproduct, the off, the, the wastage if you like. Whenever you've got a starter and you're constantly feeding it, you often end up with more than you need and you have to pour some away or give it away and, We've got some amazing recipe ideas for the starter itself, for using it to make pizza bases and crackers. Crackers are something we eat a tremendous amount of here in this house. Really nice crackers are really expensive, but we're gonna be able to use our sourdough starter to make some amazing crackers that cost almost nothing. And of course we make our own cheese, we make our own chutneys. So crackers are you know, a really important part of our diet here to you know use with those things so those are all things that are going to be coming up in future videos okay so we're finally there it's been another three and a half hours three hours something like that our kitchen has warmed up because I've been cooking dinner so um, it's sped up a little bit and it has been about what I would expect which is three to three and a half hours and as you can see look it has risen beautifully and when I feel it on top, it doesn't feel hollow, like it's about to just, like I could puncture it and it would all just collapse, which is great, that's what we want. If, you, if it does feel like it's about to collapse, then it's probably gone a bit too far. So the next step for us is to turn it the other way up and we've got another Pyrex jar we're gonna do that with. I just need to get a little bit of flour out the cupboard and this is just to stop it sticking, so just a little sprinkling on the top. Spread that out nicely so I don't need to use quite so much. We're going to just turn this as one, upside down. There we go. There we go. So the next thing I need to do is to score the top, because otherwise what's gonna happen is the, as it all expands, it's gonna really struggle to, and it either won't be able to expand because the crust on top's gonna hold it in place or it'll find odd ways of expanding and pop out in odd shapes. So we're gonna score the top with a knife Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to cover it for it to go in the oven. I'm going to cover it with the other Pyrex disc book dish because what we want is basically to keep the moisture in there for the first 25 minutes. In a commercial baker's oven they would have steam fitted as part of their ovens, the, the ability to steam it. Well we don't have that in our domestic ovens so we want to be able to kind of steam it for the first 25 minutes because otherwise what can happen is the crust is going to cook and set too quickly before it's had a chance to expand. So this is going to help that. There's something else we're going to do as well which is going to help it, but for now, we'll put that in. So my oven's up to its maximum temperature which goes up to 240 degrees. So you want it at least 230, 230, 240. It's preheated. You can see the lights on because it's just dropped below a little bit. But it's 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 really close, so it's going to be it's going to be over 220. But within a minute or two, it's going to be up to 240. So I'm going to put this in now for 25 minutes with the lid on. Then we're going to remove the lid. But I'm also going to show you something else we can do just to create some steam in there. So I've got this baking tray and some hot water. So that's going to help us with our steam. So in 25 minutes time, I'm going to take the lid off and then in another 25 minutes time, we're going to get it out and I'll see you then. 
Moment of truth, our, uh, our sourdough is ready. So I'm gonna get it out of the oven and see what it looks like. And you will know, you will know how well it's gone as at the same time I find out. The only error I think I might have made is maybe I should have used something to coat the dish so that it doesn't stick, but look. That looks like real sourdough. It looks like proper sourdough like you'd see in a shop. Really happy. Okay, now let's see if we can get it out of the bowl without too much problem. So it's come out all right. I've burnt my hand ever so slightly. Obviously the glass is incredibly hot. There we go, look at that. So I think I need to uh, maybe rethink the bowl shape. Okay, so. First impressions, looks good. I need to rethink the shape of my bowl. <laughs> John, who's a very, very dear friend of mine, he's the one who gave me the recipe that I'm using and gave me the starter. And he uses a flat Pyrex dish with another thing as a bowl on top. I think that's the way to go because it's a little bit misshapen. Maybe a little bit hard. That's the right way out. <laughs> My scores, you can see where I've scored it, but it's not really opened up. So I'm wondering if perhaps I didn't score it deep enough. And as a result, let's have a look, because I don't think I scored it deep enough. And as a result, I don't think it's been able to open up and expand. So maybe it's gonna be a bit heavy inside. Only one way to find out. Well, that doesn't look too heavy, does it? So it's got quite a quick, uh, thick crust, but it's really light inside, and it doesn't taste really sour, which is a problem I've had in the past. So, so far, I'm really happy, but the real test is gonna be my wife. And she gave it a double, double thumbs up. So yeah, first attempt, really happy with that. The only thing I think I'm gonna change is the shape of the bowl. And then I think we're in business. <laughs> so, there you go. That's my first attempt in a very long time. And my first attempt at this recipe of sourdough homemade. And I've got a feeling my kids are going to devour this in the next day or two. So I'll leave it over here and uh, I'll report back to you as to how it goes down with the family on the next video. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, if you find these videos valuable, there's several ways you can support them. The easiest of which is just to like this video, press that like button. You can do it right now. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you make sourdough. What do you do that I don't? What did I do that you don't? What am I doing wrong? That's what I'm here for. I wanna know what I'm doing wrong. Um, and also make sure you're subscribed. I'm releasing videos like this all the time, at least a few times a week, a little bit less at the moment than usual because I'm so busy at work, but in, when, I'm, when I've got the time, I'm releasing videos almost every day. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of this content. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you guys soon. Cheers.